Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. I'm hoping that we're all going to be in for a treat today because this video is to be all things Great Western. It has been absolutely years since I last did video features on the Big Four. The Big Four, of course, being the four major railway companies which dominated the industry after the grouping of 1923. They were the Great Western, which is the sort of subject of today's video, also the LNER, the LMS, and the Southern Railway. And if you like this video, do let me know down in the comments because if this does well, I might do videos on the other members of the Big Four. But the Great Western, I think, is a good one to start with. It's kind of crafty because the Great Western existed before the grouping of 1923, so we've got a, a huge breadth of locomotives to look at. There's also magic, I think, in the locomotives of the Great Western, because over all of those years that the Great Western existed, their locomotives retained that classic Great Western visual style, which made all of the locomotives of the Great Western kind of look like they were all related, all part of the same family, and I've always really liked that about the Great Western. They're just so neat and tidy, aren't they? Now, don't get me wrong, some people really don't like the Great Western for that exact reason. They think a lot of the locomotives maybe look too similar to each other, maybe they're a bit too boring, maybe it's all just samey. I don't think that, but if you do, then uh, maybe this video won't be the one for you. I don't know. Because I have all of my Great Western locomotives laid out for you in the sidings. Uh, it's not all of them, it's one per class. I think if I tried to put out every single Great Western loco I own, I would probably need three times as many sidings. It's a bit embarrassing, it's a bit silly, in fact. I've got about eight Hall class locos. It's just daft, isn't it? So we're going to go through each of these. There's so many beautiful classes to show you today. And then once we've done that, we will get a few of them running of them in fact and hopefully this will be a real great western extravaganza so let's get started here are all of the great western locomotives i think there are 29 different locomotives here which is quite a, a number obviously there were a lot more in real life i've also tried to arrange them in kind of approximate size order not because i'm ocd or anything <laughs> honest no i just thought it'd be interesting to start small and then maybe observe how the locomotives grew and developed over time anyway we'll see how we get on so we're starting with the the smallest or what I think is the smallest that is the Hornby Holden tank is it a 101 tank not entirely sure that's been around for a long time then we have the 1361 class you'll be glad to notice that's not the Helgen one that is the Kerno slash DJM version which amazingly is better then we have a few Thomas characters people always complain when I do Great Western or whatever other sessions and I don't include the Thomas characters so you got your way this time we have Percy who I believe is based on an Avonside tank is it or I think some it like that. Oliver, of course, behind him, which is based on the 14XX. And then this is one of the few duplications I've got here. That is the actual 14XX. That's the Hornby one behind that. Then we have the new Backman 94XX pannier tank. That one is an absolute beauty. Maybe I'll run that one later. Um, <clears throat> I won't reveal what I'm going to run, but uh, it might, 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 might be that one, maybe. Then we have another classic pannier tank. This one is in the Great North and South Railway livery, I think it is. That's the fictional livery from the Railway Children's story, which I think is quite interesting. Next up, we have the 2721 pannier tank. That's a really early class of pannier tank, and it's different because it doesn't have uh, an enclosed cab. Must have been a devil to work on that. Then we have Duck, who is based on the same... Is it the... Four? Nah, I'm not going to guess because I'll get it wrong. Same as the Railway Children one, though. Now, you'll have to excuse me because I think I'm going to start struggling to remember the exact classes of these. This one, though, is the Small Prairie. It's the 4575, at a guess, something like that. Please do tell me if that's wrong. I'm hoping that's right. Right. Then we've got this, this is the 56XX, it's one of the only Great Western 062 locomotives I have in the collection, which is quite interesting. Then we have this, they're getting larger now as you'll notice, this is the Large Prairie from Hornby, it's the 5100 as opposed to the 6100 was it, something like that, don't have one of those. Then we have the 52XX, this is a very large locomotive now, one of the largest tank engines, uh, Two is it a 280, something like that, yeah, it's very unusual for a tank engine. And then over at the top of the turntable we have the largest tank engine possibly ever, almost certainly on the Great Western, uh, if you know otherwise do comment down below. 
below. It is the 72XX, an absolute monster of a tank engine. What were they thinking? Okay, now we're on to tender engines then. So let's come all the way over here for the first one. This is the Dean Goods locomotive. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Very early, that one. Then we have the Collet Goods, similar, but obviously quite a lot more modern, produced by Charles Collet, those. Next up, this is again quite an old one. Uh, this is the Dean Single, I think it is. Yep, Dean Single. Yep, it's a Dean Single, a single wheeler, in fact, which is very unusual. And again, I do love the livery of that one. That's a Hornby job. Speaking of hot liveries, we have this one. This is probably the best looking ever, I would say. Uh, if you disagree, you're going to have a real job persuading me. But yeah, it's the City Class 440 City of Truro. Absolutely gorgeous, that one. Love it. The next one looks more old-fashioned than City of Truro, but that was by design. It is actually more modern. It's the Duke Dog, I think. Yeah, that's the only name I know it by. It's got other names. Sorry, I've forgotten them. It's another 440, though, as you can tell. One more 440. I think this is pretty much the largest of them. I could be wrong. This is the County Class. There were a couple of counties. I'll show you the other one, but this is the 440 County Class. Then we have this. This is one you'll probably recognise if you watch my reviews, because I absolutely love this one. It's the Dapolt Mogul, they did such a good job on those, absolutely love them. Here's another really popular one, this is a Mana class, this is the old Backman one, soon to be replaced by the Dapol or Acura scale one, depending on which you're going for. Then we have the only weathered locomotive I'm showing today, this is the Hornby Grange class, that's another very, very handsome 460. We're getting on to, I think, almost bar one exclusively 460s now, and they all look the same, so probably I'm going to get them wrong, I apologise if that's the case. This, though, I believe is the Star Class. Uh, that's one of the early ones. Then we have the County. I mentioned that a little while ago. So this is the 460 County as opposed to the 440. Completely different. They just chose the same names for some unknown, bizarre, confusing reason just to bewilder model railway enthusiasts when they came along many years in the future. Then we have this, the Hall Class. I deliberately picked this one. It's the Backman one in the sort of early Great Western lined green. Poor mechanism, but looks absolutely superb. One of, again, one of the best looking, I would say. Then we have this, the heavy 280 freight locomotive. That is obviously not a 460, but again, that is one of my favourites. Very, very good looking loco, that. And then to finish, we have the two mightiest 460s probably ever produced. We have the Castle class at the back there. That one is Earl of St. Germans. Absolutely amazing model from Hornby. And then the largest of them all, the King class, the absolute beast of a King class. It doesn't really look all that much bigger than the other 460s. I suppose it does a little bit, but no, in real life, these were absolute powerhouses. So there you have it. There we have all, well, 29. It's a bugger. I couldn't find an extra one, isn't it, to make it up to 30. But there we go. Yep, all 29 of my Great Western classes of steam locomotive. And now we have everybody's favourite bit, I'm going to get a few of these running. So here comes the first Great Western loco of the day. Look at this, this is such a beauty. You'll notice a lot of the locos I'm choosing are newer. They're sort of newer additions to my collection, I suppose. That just means that I'm not sort of duplicating anything I did in my previous Great Western running sessions. So this, of course, is the new Backman 94XX or 9400 class, which was a really late design of 060 pannier tank introduced back in 1947. They were only constructed a year before nationalisation, and the first of this class would be the final Great Western steam locomotives to be built. The 94XX was the final development in an extensive history of pannier tanks dating way back to 1872, and although these were very modern and efficient, the class saw very, very short working lives. Uh, the withdrawals took place only three years after the class was completed. By 1965, the final example was withdrawn, while the design was less than 20 years old at that point. Only two have been preserved, one of which I was able to film and ride behind on the South Devon back in 2019. This next loco is another guilty pleasure. This one's just absolutely fantastic. And to be honest with you, I can't see me filming any Great Western video without involving this or without really wanting to anyway. So it is of course City of Truro, part of the Great Western City class, which was also known as the GWR 3700 class. And this class was made up of just 20 locomotives built between 1902 and 1909, of course, to the design of George Jackson Churchward. 
They were characterised by their Belpaire fireboxes and lack of domes, and the class was immediately recognisable. The class would be the first Great Western 440 designed to feature a tapered boiler, which would eventually become Churchwood's standard number 4 boiler. This member of the class was reportedly the first to exceed 100 miles an hour, the first locomotive in fact. City of Truro of course uh, still exists today, it was the only member of the class to be preserved as well. It was last restored back in 2004 at a cost of £130,000 but by 2013, less than 10 years on, the loco was in such a state that it was withdrawn ahead of its boiler ticket expiry due to leaks and other issues. Very sadly it's been out of action ever since. Next up then, man, we are getting through my favourites today. This is another one, it's another reasonably new loco. This is the Dapol Mogul. Again, one of the greatest locos of 2020, I would say. So yeah, the 43XX, also known as the Great Western 4300 class, was introduced in 1911, again, to George Jackson Churchwood's design. In total, a lot more of these were built, 342 in total over 21 years. Uh, that period ended in 1932. The design was made entirely up of standard parts previously manufactured from different locomotives, including the standard number no. 4 boiler, which we've talked about already, with superheating of course, Saint class cylinders, 31XX wheels, and the design was so similar to previous ones that no prototype was even trialled. They knew it would perform as intended. And they were right, hence the relatively large number of locomotives built. They performed some 60 years of service doing mixed traffic, and they lasted well into the BR era, with the final withdrawal not taking place until 1964. Only two remain in preservation, while the rest, as always, were unfortunately scrapped. There you go then folks, those are the first three engines that I'm going to showcase today. You'll notice I've started from the smaller end, so the next engines you're going to see are from the larger end. Here comes our next Great Western loco then. This is an absolute staple of the Great Western. It would be morally wrong, I think, to have a Great Western running session without featuring this. So it is, of course, the Hall class or the 4900 class. These were introduced a little bit later than the other locos today, uh, back in 1928, to the design of Charles Collett. Now, for many years, the Hall class was the standard mixed traffic engine on the Great Western, and it was heavily based on previous designs such as the Saints, and it was very closely related to them mechanically, although, of course, much larger and more powerful. They proved to be extremely successful locomotives these, so much so that the other railway engineers of the other uh, companies such as the Thompson for example, good old Thompson of the l &ER, they actually took inspiration from their design to create their own locomotives. In addition, an impressive 258 were produced in total over 15 years, which is an unusually long time I suppose. In 1948, the halls became part of the British Railways fleet, where they were classified as 5MT. Not bad, really, for a design dating back to 1902. Around 10 of these have been preserved, although the rest, sadly, were scrapped. Next up then, this is a bit of an oddball choice, um, maybe you didn't see this one coming, I don't know, maybe you did, but this happens to be one of my favourites, it's the 2800 class or the 28XX, and this was a class of early 280 locomotives designed for the Great Western, once again, you guessed it, by Churchwood, I didn't realise they were all Churchwood today actually, <laughs> probably should have picked a few uh, sort of collet designs and whatnot. Anyway, the first of the class was introduced in 1903 for heavy freight work, and the remainder of the class followed over the next 15 years or so. During the mid-1940s, coal shortages caused two of the class to be converted for oil firing, which is pretty interesting, and that product was reclassified as the 4800 class. However, unforeseen costs caused the project to end rather abruptly after beginning, and so oil-fired locomotives never really caught on in the UK, or indeed the Great Western. In total, 84 of the class were produced, and their eventual withdrawal took seven years, the first being in 1958 and the final being in 1965. A total of six have been preserved, and a couple of them are even still operating.
and we're going to finish off with the probably arguably most impressive and most monstrous of them all. It is, of course, the Mighty King class. And these were introduced to the Great Western in 1927, and these were indeed designed by Charles Collett. So there you go, we finally got a Collett design. They were a development of the earlier Castle class, which in itself was a development of the Churchwood Star class. So Churchwood's still a part of it, flipping Churchwood. Got everywhere, didn't he? Got into all the cracks. He intended them to be a super castle, that was kind of their nickname, and subsequently they became the largest and most powerful 460 locomotive ever to run within the United Kingdom, let alone the Great Western, so I'm not kidding, they're serious monsters. Most of the class served well into the BR era, where they continued to be used as express passenger locomotives until they were finally withdrawn in 1962. Of the 31 that were produced, not a huge number, only three have been preserved, and this particular example was built in 1930, but became severely damaged in a 1940 accident when the crew misread the signals. It did survive though, but it was cut up in 1962 after 34 years of service, as were so many other members of the class. Well, there you go then, folks. Hopefully you will agree that that was the Great Western Way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do, of course, let me know down in the comments what is your favourite Great Western locomotive of all time. Did it appear in this video? Is it a class that I might not have ever heard of? Uh, do be sure to let me know. I might even put a poll over on the community tab so that you can let me know which of the engines I ran was your favourite, although bear in mind I will have to group some of them together because uh, YouTube will only allow me to put five options in, so that's a bit of a pain, but hopefully that poll will give us an idea of which of these engines is the most popular. And for that reason, I don't think I will pick. I'm not going to express what my favorite was because I, I don't want it to skew the poll. So I might tell you in a future video if anyone cares, which I'm sure you don't. But that is it, that is the Great Western running session. Loads and loads of amazing Great Western locos out there in this hobby, aren't there? We are really so lucky to have really so many to choose from. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your company. I'll see you on the next one. All right. Cheers, folks.